collaboration with the Cyprus Mail, this is the Cyprus News Digest with Rosie Haralambos. Coming up on the programme this week, we talk at length to soul singer Joss Stone. If I sit with somebody that doesn't understand a word of English, but he or she happens to be a musician or a singer, we can communicate totally and so clearly, and it's just, it's beautiful, and it, I hope and I think that it's lovely to listen to as well. And we hear all about the Windcraft Music Festival. The main focus is on wind instruments, so any group or band or uh, collaborations that include this um, type of instruments is welcome. Joss Stone is on a world tour. She stopped in Cyprus last week for the Fengaros Festival up in the picturesque village of Gadodris. Country number 74 of how many, Joss? Well, it kind of depends how you feel about it, but um, I reckon there's about 204 countries. But there was 196 recognised by the, by the UN um, when I googled the list, when I first came up with the idea, and that number kind of goes up and down. So what did give you the idea? Why are you doing it? Okay, so I was up this mountain um, in Japan. It was years ago now. It was like probably seven years ago, <laughs> maybe more. And... Is, uh, it was a gig called Fuji Rock, so you travel quite a long way to get there um, in, in a bus. And we went up and up and up, and it was raining, and the clouds were like really low, so you couldn't quite see the top of this mountain. And it, would, it just looked very different to my eyes, you know. I'm from Devon, England, and you know, I'd only seen certain things up until that point in my life. And I, I saw this place, I was like, oh my God, this... I might as well be on another planet, you know, coupled with um, the people there. They have a completely different culture, um, speak in a totally different language, they look totally different, and they act very different, like, in their... They're so polite and just, like... That when I was, I was on stage, um, the way that they applauded was totally different. Like, they were just so... There was, like, thousands of people there, and... In between songs, they would really go for it and give you all the love in the world, and then you'd take a breath in to speak, and it was silence. And it was raining, and they had their little cockles on. I don't know what it was. Something about that moment and that environment, it made me feel like I was so far from home, but yet I was still connecting with them. They still... We, we, we were communicating through music. So I asked myself, how did I get here? How am I here? I'm on another planet. And the answer was music. And then that thought kind of went to the next. Well, why don't people go to every country then? Why do they only go to some? And the answer to that is always, well, because it doesn't pay. It's always about money at that point. So I thought, well, I think, I think people should, you know. So I said to my friend Paul, who's a war journalist and travelled to all sorts of really interesting places, um, regardless of the state that it's in, I said, Paul, has anyone ever done a, a world tour? And he was like, yeah, people do them all the time. I was like, yeah, but like every country in the world, he said, like, I don't know. And I said, well, should we do it? He goes, yeah, right. So we got on the plane home and we rerouted it and we sent it to my booking agent in the US. And he pretty much just laughed at me for like six years and humoured me. <laughs> so we got rid of him and now I'm doing it. You sound as if you feel that music is the answer to a lot of the world's problems. It can be. I don't know if it's the answer, but I think it, I think it helps um, make the initial connection so then you can um, get to the answer. I think conversation and planning and um, logic and all that, that could be the answer, but music and art and dance, and smiling, love, all that stuff... That, that's the connection, that's our human connection that helps us empathise with people. And if you don't have empathy, I mean, really, you're kind of in trouble. So I think, I think it's important. But you've been to so many countries already, you have many, many more to go to. We'll talk in a minute, perhaps, about how long you think this is going to take you. Oh, God. <laughs> but each audience, as you've just mentioned, is different. Yeah. 
you have somehow to, in a sense, grasp the culture before you go out on stage, don't you? I know that the yeah. music will do a certain part of it, mm -hmm. but it helps, does it not, if you have some understanding of mm. where the audience is coming from. So how do, you do, how do you do that? Yeah. Actually, that can be a bit of a, a worry for me. So I go to the places um, completely blind. I'm, I'm a blank canvas. So I try not to make any opinion or assumption um, bef before I go. I mean, I have a lot of conversations around my kitchen table about different countries and their issues and things like this. And I always, at, at this point, I kind of go, well, I'll go find out and I'll let you know. I'll go ask the people. So I might ask the cab driver, what's it like here? You know, what, what's the music scene or what's the audience like? What's the political state? What's happening in, in your life right now? Um, and you, you just get a feel. But I will say that making the gig, the first few songs, it is like... It's like going on a date. It's like you, a first date. So you don't know who these people are or what, what this conversation is going to go like. You have no idea. So you just try and be polite and you try and make people feel okay and make them feel good. And then you, you kind of gather their little emotions and, um, and make, make a decision. And sometimes that decision is wrong, so you rewind. You go, okay, okay, that song maybe wasn't the right song to sing. I'm just going to do a little ballad and see how they like that. And you judge it. Um, and usually, pretty much 99% of the time, by the end of the show, you've made friends and you've had uh, an intimate discussion and you've created a relationship and everybody feels linked. And that's the most gorgeous thing. It's the closest thing to magic that I've come across. So... You've been to some unusual countries. What would you say is the most unusual to date? The most unusual? In terms of what you're doing. I mean, going yeah. out on stage and performing. Because mm -hmm. it's a big difference going maybe to a small venue somewhere in the yeah. middle of nowhere yeah. where possibly a lot of the audience are not very familiar with your music than it is going, yeah. for oh, yeah. example, to London or Ottawa yeah. or wherever. Yeah, 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 it's so different in so many different places. Um, if we're talking about um, gig-wise, Bangladesh was, it was very, very different the way that the audience were. So they, they, were, they were into it, which was great, thank God. They stood up and they, they danced, which was great. I mean, when they don't do that, I get very thrown and I get very uncomfortable because I feel like they're uncomfortable and I get all stressed out. Um, but they did. But when they stood up and came and wanted to dance and come to the front, which is joyful, they got sectioned off um, by, by the security guards there, men one side and women the other side, which I have never seen before. I don't know how many times I'm going I'm to see it on this trip. I haven't been to um, any of the stands or anything like that yet, so I don't know. But that was new to me then. And I just didn't really know what to do with it. I was like, hang on a minute, what's going on here? Um, you didn't quite realise it until you were, like, properly in. But, yeah, that, that, that was very strange. Djibouti was kind of different, too. That was weird. In all the places you go, I think you try and also connect, you said, with the local musicians. Yes. Yeah. So how do you go about finding them? And... In many countries, there are so many different types of local musicians. Yeah. You've probably got different dialects, different styles mm. of even traditional music. So what are you looking for? I'm looking for something I've not heard before. You know, something... This is my little selfish bit. I love this bit. I love it so much because it opens up my, my ears. Um, it's like your taste buds in a way. It's like you just want to try different things and experience different things. And hopefully I get to give what I have. Um, but I, I look for something unique to, to that place. So if I can find something that's born in that country, that's really, that's really the best collaboration for me. So the folk music, you usually find it in that. Or you'll come across an instrument that you've never seen before. So it's, it's a learning it's a learning thing. And then hopefully those that will follow my journey will then also learn a little bit about what 
the different sounds are around the world and the different instruments and timings, um, languages and inflections and how people move their, their voices and stuff. And that's actually the whole basis for what is known as world music mm. these days. Uh, how excited are you by the collaborations that we see between all these different genres of music? Yeah bringing it together to create something that's totally new. And you've worked mm. with a lot of big names as well, haven't you, mm. who have a different style of music yeah. than yours? Yeah, it's nice. I think that's where it comes into its own. So for me, m my favourite part of my job is a collaboration. Any kind. I don't mind. I don't mind what it is. It's when we come together. If I sit with somebody that doesn't understand a word of English but he or she happens to be a musician or a singer, we can communicate totally and so clearly, and it's just, it's beautiful, and it, I hope and I think that it's lovely to listen to as well, because it's fresh and it's new. Um, it's like how all of our cultures are coming together, you know, how there's, there's so much more mulatto people in this world now than there was before. You know, there's no, no longer just this black and white and Asian. The, the, we don't split this up anymore. Now we're, we're all kind of coming together. And in a hundred or so years, we're all, it will all just be this wonderful mix. And all of our foods, all the spices are coming together. And the different tastes and, you know, mixing vanilla with chilli or something. You know, it's like, wow, it's exciting. And it keeps you alive. So, you know styles of clothing and art and things like this you know the Indian earrings with a really posh sleek black dress or something like this it, whatever you're into whether it be fashion or cooking or painting or dancing mix it all up and you create something that's special and unique and it excites you it, it keeps people alive I love that I think that that's so important otherwise we get stagnant and we get bored and that's no good. So, I hope that answers your question. <laughs> I went off on a tangent. Another how many countries to go and how much of the influences you've just spoken about mm. are going to be sort of entering the Joss Stone genre. I yeah. mean, there's an awful lot to absorb, in a sense. How yeah. long is this tour going to take you? And what are you hoping, at the end of it, Yeah you will have, in a sense, achieved. Right. Um, well, I think it'll probably, it'll probably take another two or three years. Um, I could make it take ten years, you know, if I wanted to treat it like a bit of a holiday, which some days I actually do want to treat it like a holiday, like today. That'd be good if I could spend a week here. Um, but, yeah, I think if we treat it as a, as a tour, you know, which is what it is, it should take two or three years more than now. But um, at the end, I just live day by day. So I just hope that whatever it is that I do and we do as a team, I hope that we give good feeling. That's pretty much it. If I can give good feeling in the noises that I make, in the conversations that I have, and the charities that we visit, and we try and spread the word of, um, um, of the charities, the good people that we visit along the way, we, shouldn't, we just try and spread goodness. And if I can do that with my life, not just with this tour, but with my everyday life, then I'll be, I'll be pleased about that. I hope that I can do that with my days. I, just, I don't just want to breathe in and out and, and not do that. You know, so I do that. I try and do that. And the world tour will continue. We've been talking to Joss Stone on the Cyprus News Digest, caught her in Cadodris, where she'd performed at the Fengaros Music Festival. In collaboration with the Cyprus Mail, this is the Cyprus News Digest with Rosie Haralambus. The biggest achievement of Crime Stoppers has been the ability of the public to be able to give information about crime anonymously. There's no way I could have kept prostituting without the drugs. There's no way I could have had my body used like a public toilet because that's actually what prostitution is. And then the fourth series I started three days after I'd won the Oscar. So the whole of the Monarch of the Glen experience was all interplatted with the Gosford Park Oscar experience. I was working with Ronnie James Dio and David was going to reform white snake in 2003 cyprus was chosen because cyprus is a stable peaceful and uh, secure place we have to really look closely 
what are we doing with children, what are we doing with adolescents, and what are we doing with adults that can help them move into a more literate uh, situation. The ones that I'm proudest of are the ones that were true discoveries, where we found something we didn't know existed. As well as being holiday time at this time of year in Cyprus, when everybody seems to decamp from the towns down to the coast, it's also the festival season. Almost every week there seems to be either a rock festival, a soul festival, a hip-hop festival, well, some sort of festival. And that's no different next weekend, when the village of Gatidata in the Nicosia district is going to be filled with the sound of wind instruments. It is the third Windcraft Music Festival. To tell us all about it is Eli Mikhail. Eli, it's a different type of festival simply because you're using so many different instruments that aren't probably featured, with the exception maybe of a saxophone, on almost all the other festivals. Um, that's right. It's a windy festival, I would say. We'll focus on wind instruments and we cover a um, wide range of music styles. So I wouldn't say it's a rock or jazz or ethnic festival. It's just a music festival uh, that focuses on winds and uh, tries to attract musicians and an audience that likes different kinds of music. Classical music too? Classical music as well. We have a clarinet quartet. So what do you actually have coming up and how did this all sort of generate? Because it's the third time you've done this Mm -hmm. and I think you now have a specific organisation because it has been so successful. Mm -hmm. So who comes to the festival and how do you decide what range of music to play? So as I said, um, the main focus is on wind instruments. So any group or band or uh, collaborations that include this um, type of instruments is welcome um, to apply for for our festival and that's how, how the selection was, was done. So, so it's not purely wind instruments, it's groups that include wind instruments. Exactly. Tell us a little bit about what you've got lined up this year. Uh, first let's do the music but then let's go to all the workshops and mm-hmm. the other things that you've got going on. Yeah, exactly. So our um, headliners for this festival is a great group from Greece, the called Mot Plagal. It's a band that has been playing for more than 20 years in Greece. And um, their saxophone player, Thodoris Relos, is giving a workshop for musicians. It's the, it's the only um, specialized workshop that we have in the program this year. He will focus on um, uh, traditional rhythms uh, of the Greek and Balkan uh, music idioms. Then we have uh, another saxophone player from Canada, Uh, Zachary Franz, who is well known from his uh, group, the Soul Jazz Orchestra. He's collaborating with um, some Greek musicians and they will be playing on the first day of the festival, on Friday. The rest of the bands are Cypriot groups that are quite active in the Cypriot music scene. We have Tria Frison collaborating with uh, Elias Ioan on the trumpet. We have uh, Drumble Beats, that's actually a percussion band, but for this uh, festival, for this purpose, they are joining the Wingcraft Band, which is a 20-member wind band. They are playing together on the second day of the festival. Then we have Trio Nero, which uh, works on... uh, it's, it's an ethnic project that takes a traditional uh, music and um, mixes it with some rock and alternative music uh, elements. And we also have a jazz quartet on the first day, the original quartet, featuring Marius Haralambos on the saxophone. So it is a real mix, and you did mention there was also classical music, which is most unusual in terms of the festival season. Mm-hmm. Do you tell us about that? A classical music will um, actually it's actually a clarinet quartet uh, playing um, in a very pictu- picturesque place in the village, not on the main stage, but in the center of the village, and they will be um, performing. Uh, classical music and some film music and other kinds of... uh... What about the village of Gatidada itself? Why did you choose that village? And I've just been last weekend up to Kadodrista, the Fengaros Mm -hmm. Festival, where again they have a stage in the village, another stage, and then the main stage. Mm -hmm. It sounds as if this is, in a sense, the way that the festival scene in Cyprus is going. Find a picturesque village, get the local people on board, and then take it over for a couple of days 
to bring music there. Mm -hmm. um, Cathedral is actually quite different than Katowice in, in the sense that it's much, much smaller and much more cozy, <laughs> I would say. We have a very nice venue there. Um, our main stage is set up in the yard of an old inn, which is actually in the ruins of the, of the old inn, which stopped functioning as an inn in the early 50s. So we took the place and uh, gave it, uh, revived it, so gave it some, some life and set up our stage in this um, very nice setting. And uh, the other reason why we chose Katita is that the locals are really involved in it. Uh, it's not just a festival taking over the place and uh, 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 taking it over for, for, for a couple of days. Uh, the, the locals are really involved in the festival and we also specifically try to um, have some uh, activities during the uh, two, day, uh, two days of the festival that involve them into... Um, for example, this year we have um, an orientation game uh, which will encourage the visitors to get in touch with the locals and uh, meet them and ask them and learn about the history and their traditions and everything. You've also so, got, I think it's fascinating, uh, somebody who's going to demonstrate how to make and then play the, now I hope I get this right, the Chiavli, which is, uh, I've always thought of it a bit like a recorder. It, it's similar, isn't it? It's a, a sort of Cypriot flute. Is it the, the one that we see the shepherds playing? Exactly, it's a shepherd's flute. It's similar to the construction of a, of a, of a recorder, only that it's made out of reed. Uh, and it's the typical wind instrument of the Cypriot traditional music. He will be uh, performing, um, performing and showing how to construct, uh, to, to make a bithgavli. And we will also have another traditional wind player, which will be playing the zurna. And what's that? That's a um, kind of oboe, I could say, but the traditional version of an oboe. And what's that made of? Uh, that's made of wood, wood with a double reed. Okay, but and the actual uh, Pithgiavli, people will be able to make their own and take them home, do you think? Um, I mean, what a brilliant way to remember a festival. Yes, they will, um, um, they will have the chance to uh, see the whole procedure of how to make one and try and uh, make their own at home. It'll be interesting to see what they sound like <laughs> if they get to play them afterwards. So give us uh, the full details. It starts next Friday. It runs until late on Saturday. Now, I think you've got ticket sales already open and there are different prices whether you go for one day or two days. So give us all those details. It starts on Friday the 12th of August. The workshop started around 5 o'clock and the concerts start at 7 and goes until um, late. And the second day, Saturday the 13th, we start early in the morning with Qigong workshop. What's that? Uh, it's, a tai, it's a kind of uh, similar to Tai Chi. Okay. Then we have um, a workshop in the morning and then in the afternoon we start again from 4 until late again. Tickets cost 15 euro for one day or 20 for two days. I should mention that uh, workshops are free anyway. So the price of the ticket includes the workshops, that's, that's all part of what you pay for, and I think children under a certain age also go free. Children under 12 go free. So there you are, there's a Facebook page, I'm sure there's also a website. Tell us where people can find out more and where they can get those tickets. Mm -hmm. So all information uh, can be found on our website, www.windcraftmusicfest.com. Uh, you can also find us on Facebook, Windcraft Music Fest. And ticket um, pre-sale runs until Thursday afternoon, evening. And you can still find tickets in Nicosia at Ratapu workshop in Faneromeni or in, uh, um, in the Tseriu Avenue there is a um, coffee place called Velo. In Limassol you can get tickets at, uh, at the coffee shop Electric Aidi. And in Larnaca you can find them at the phot photography uh, shop uh, Three Sitting Birds. And finally, if people, as they do, want to go up and make a weekend of this camping, they can do that too. And of course, in that area, there will also be agritourism opportunities if it's not too late. That's right. Uh, agritourism opportunities can be found most probably in Kakobetria and Kalopanayodis, if they're still available. <laughs> and uh, of course, camping is uh, possible in the village 
we have all uh, facilities there. And that's a country. free camping site. So if you want to go and see what the Windcraft Music Fest is all about next weekend, you should be in the village of Gadidada. We've been talking about it to Eli Mikhail. In collaboration with the Cyprus Mail, this is the Cyprus News Digest with Rosie Haralambos. August in Cyprus is the time when most people, of course, disappear off to the coast, and it's all about sea and sand. But in recent years, it's also been very much to do with music. There are so many festivals coming up in the next few days and weeks. Let's take a look at some of them. We'll start tonight with the Asila Music Festival, which is featuring ten bands and four DJs. They'll be rocking on two stages in the La Taura Corey, just outside Nicosia near Valley Village. Their aim is to raise funds to provide a sustainable infrastructure in the Kofinu refugee camp. And the tickets cost just 10 euros. It starts at 6 tonight and runs for 12 hours non-stop until 6 o'clock tomorrow morning. On Saturday, Into the Limbo will be a festival at the deserted village near to where Asila is taking place, also just outside Nicosia, and that's at Ios Sozomenos. That starts at 6 p.m. and finishes on Sunday morning. If you're into reggae, you may want to head up into the mountains where veteran reggae DJ and singer and performer Haji Mike will be at Kiperunda Square from 8.30 p.m. tonight and entrance to that one is free. And on Saturday, at the Pantopolion Square near the Saripolu area of Limassol, nine acoustic bands will be taking part in the third Limassol Acoustic Festival. Entrance to that one is also free. And there's more music on August the 11th in Limassol with a soul festival featuring live performances, food and drinks. Part of the proceeds of that going to the Radio Marathon Appeal and it's happening in the Podamosier Masoyas parking lot starting at 7pm. Tickets are 20 and 15 euros. You can find most of these if you look on Facebook for music festivals in Cyprus. There's a lot of them coming up. Get in touch with the Cypress News Digest by emailing cypressnewsdigest at gmail.com. Well, with the island shutting down pretty well for the next couple of weeks at least, I think we'll also take a break at the Cypress News Digest. I hope to be back at the beginning of September, but till we meet again, have a great summer and take care and God bless. Bye-bye now.